Welcome to Electro Online. Before we show you some examples how to use all these equations, let's summarize the various forms of power. First, the real power. The real power is the real part of the complex power, which is defined as the magnitude of the, of the complex power times the cosine of the phase angle. Simply, it's voltage times current times the cosine of the phase angle, and we use the RMS uh, voltage and RMS current. If we take a look here at this triangle, this is called the power triangle. On the horizontal axis, we have the real power. On the vertical axis, we have the reactive power. And on the, on the diagonal here, on the hypotenuse, we have what we call the apparent power or the complex power. The complex power is the phase or format of the uh, parent power, where apparent power is simply the magnitude of the complex power. So the real power would be this power right here, the power consumed by the resistor. The complex power is this power right here. It's defined as the bolt phase S. It's the real part plus the imaginary part of the power. We can also find that by multiplying the RMS voltage times, times the complex conjugate of the RMS current. Now these are the phase of formats of that. So we multiply the magnitude of the voltage times the magnitude of the current times the cosine of the phase angle. The apparent power is what we call the magnitude of the complex power. So we simply take the complex power, take the magnitude of that, this is simply the magnitude of the voltage times the magnitude of the current, or the square root of the power squared, the real power squared, plus the complex power, not the complex, but the reactive power squared. The power factor is the ratio of the real power divided by the apparent power, which is the magnitude of the complex power. So it's basically the ratio of the real power divided by the magnitude of the complex power, which is also the cosine of the difference of the phase angle of the voltage and the phase angle of the current, simply the cosine of phi in our phasor diagram. So then here, let's go ahead and write that down. So this is phi, which is equal to theta sub v minus theta sub i. So the cosine of that is considered the power factor. The reactive power, the vertical axis right here, the imaginary axis, is the imaginary part of the complex power, which is simply the magnitude of the complex power times the sine of the difference of the angles of the voltage and the current. So finally, we can summarize that the P stands for the actual power dissipated by the, resistive, by the resistor in the circuit, Q is the energy exchange. So instead of thinking as power, because we're not really losing power, it's the exchange of energy between the source and the reactive elements of the load, the inductors and the capacitor. So it's a constant feeding back and forth of energy between the inductor and the capacitor and the circuit and the source in the circuit where the power dissipated is the real power lost by the circuit as the circuit is operating. And so hopefully that'll give us now a really good understanding of the various forms of power in the circuit. And that's how it's done.